Good afternoon. I think it's time to start because you all became quiet instantly. Um, <laughs> my name is Enrique Walker. I'm the director of the Master of Science in Advanced Architectural Design at the school, and I'm actually, uh, it's a pleasure for me to in briefly introduce the, this uh, new conversation between Peter Isom and Mark Wigley on behalf of Reinhold Martin, uh, the director of the Temple Hoyne Buell Center for the Study of American Architecture, which has hosted this ongoing series for uh, a number of years. Peter Eisenman and Mark Wigley, in fact, uh, need no introduction. I would also say that this event, which has, is now reaching its 10th uh, installment, uh, needs no introduction either. Um, the series started into, in the summer of 2004, um, when Mark Wigley interviewed Peter Eisenman. It um, continued the following summer, when in turn Peter Eisenman interviewed Mark Wigley, and has since become an ongoing annual conversation, always in the summer, at this place, with the exception of last year when it happened in the fall. So it's basically going back to the original serial structure. Over the past few years, uh, the discussions have addressed uh, usually an, or have been triggered by one term or one word. Um, today, the Peter and Mark will discuss uh, the problematic of homogeneous space. Uh. Your, your serve. And my serve, always. Um, Enrique and Rhino, thank you for uh, um, our annual uh, sojourn. Um, many of you don't realize that I went to school here, uh, since it's not one of the advertisements uh, for bringing you here. Uh, but so I owe <laughs> something to... Uh, uh, this place. Uh, I can't say that I bleed light blue uh, since I'm supposed to bleed dark blue these days, but anyway. But you uh, do bleed. But I do bleed. <laughs> I want, before we begin, since uh, this is a very leisurely sort of thing, um, I want to say that the most important uh, thing that's happened in New York this summer is not uh, tomorrow's What is the Experimental, uh, although you should probably go to that, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced that that's where the world is, nor is this the second most important uh, event of the summer. But the most important event of the summer for me, and of many summers, is the Le Corbusier exhibition at uh, MoMA. And uh, any of you that have not gone, you don't have to buy the catalog or even read the catalog, but just go and be there for two hours and look. Uh, don't read what the labels say. Don't read uh, the, the the theme of landscape because it's nonsense. Look, Corbusier <laughs> couldn't give a damn about landscape. Uh, uh, <laughs> One of his five points was the roof garden, uh, so that he thought landscape should be on the roof. And <laughs> Pilotti, which was that the house should be off the ground. <clears throat> so it's, it, whatever the intellectual uh, prescriptions that have been set up to lure people, unsuspecting people, to MoMA uh, don't matter. Just go and look at the stuff. Um, I also, uh, because I'm going to start uh, with uh, Alberti, uh, uh, while present conditions would tell you, as Jonathan Galassi wrote in the last issue of New York Magazine, that there is no uh, intellectual work uh, today. It's all to do with marketing. Uh, I, I firmly believe that 50 years from now, uh, when marketing has uh, uh, given up uh, that intellectual work, especially in architecture, uh, may return. And so I would like to suggest that one important aspect of your curriculum or any curriculum uh, would have to include Alberti, Palladio, and Le Corbusier. Um, if you don't know them, by the time you leave whatever institution that you're part of, uh, then you have not been 
educated, uh, etc. Uh, <clears throat> and I also uh, want to st start this off by suggesting that <clears throat> anybody who's been to the Le Corbusier show and don't feel that potential passion should go into hedge funds right away. Uh, I mean, because otherwise you're wasting your time. Uh, and I believe it's not intellection so much as passion uh, that one sees um, at that exhibition. I had dinner with Richard Meyer the night of the opening at MoMA, and I said, hey, Richard, 50 years from now, do you think they could mount an exhibition like this of your work? And he honestly said, no. And I agree with him, no, they couldn't. <laughs> uh, but I would also say that 50 years from now, there's no one alive or in the interim between Le Corbusier and Richard Meyer that one could say uh, they could do a show like that. So uh, there's a lot of space open for all of you because uh, there's, since there's no one living and no one since Le Corbusier that MoMA could mount such a show, uh, just think of the possibilities. Uh, and um, I don't think we're here today to discourage that, but to encourage the possibility. That having been said, I'm going to start with uh, a brief history uh, that is, I, I believe, in invented by myself. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm going to start with uh, uh, the time of Alberti. And I'm going to read a few pages uh, from uh, a, a text that uh, I, I have written but not published. It's probably been on the internet uh, four or five times, but in any case, um, uh, the time 1450 was a very unsettled time in Europe. It was the beginning of the possibility of a Western humanism and the beginning of a consciousness about what the relationship between uh, the human subject and architecture, the object, was about. Prior to that time, there was a condition of what I would call transcendental metaphysics, that is, a relationship between objects were not between human subjects and objects, but with some kind of uh, transcendental god uh, being who mediated between subject and object. Now, around the middle of the 15th century, that mediation changed, and a proto-humanism that is moving toward humanism came into being, which suggested that the relationship between subject and object <coughs> That metaphysical relationship was no longer transcendental, but was imminent, I-M-M-A-N-E-N-T, to the possible relationship between subject and object. That, um, and that uh, was no longer mediated by some transcendental entity. With this came a consciousness of a disciplinarity, uh, <coughs> or the need for discipline, uh, that was uh, going to be put forward uh, or needed to be put forward uh, and was done so by Alberti uh, uh, who produced a treatise, the 10 books on architecture, De Re Edificatoria, outlining a strategy for a discipline uh, as well as <coughs> a what that discipline, not only the strategy for it, but what that discipline was to entail. Essentially, there had been a book um, uh, 15 centuries, 14 centuries before by Vitruvius, which was a, a, a book, um, a similar kind of treatise, which was an outline of <coughs> uh, what Greek architecture was uh, in relation by a Roman, whereas Alberti's was the first critique of Greek architecture and of, Val of Vitruvius 
as to what another kind of architecture could be, uh, that is uh, a Roman architecture, uh, and uh, what Romanity could bring to architecture that the Greek uh, uh, could not. Um, now, the uh, first thing that's different about Alberti's book, other than it was about Roman uh, architecture, it was about uh, a, a wall architecture as, about, uh, uh, as opposed to a trabeated architecture. Uh, it was an arcuated uh, architecture, which was a residue of a wall, all of these kinds of uh, internal disciplinary things. But the most important issue uh, in Alberti uh, was, there were two things, but one, he conceptualized the idea of space uh, at, for the first time. In other words, the idea of space Spatium uh, was uh, articulated as an important issue in uh, the object of architecture. And second uh, thing was uh, a new concept of the author. And uh, that concept uh, had to do with the possibility of uh, a system of notation, whether it was perspectival or what, but it was that the author no longer had to be prima facie at the building project. That is, the architect uh, and Alberti had watched Brunelleschi sit uh, on the job at the Duomo for 48 years, uh, realizing that work. And Alberti said, that there must be another way for an author to take uh, responsibility uh, for the work. So Alberti produced an idea of a notational system, I would call it an indexical system, uh, whereby he could project onto paper notations that would allow him to give these notations to a builder who would in fact then take those ideas and produce them uh, on the site. Uh, so the idea of the, an author, a different kind of author, but never, nevertheless the architect as author, uh, and the idea of space became very important uh, to uh, Alberti's work in 1460. Now, what I would argue is that the, whether Alberti himself called it, uh, the space that Alberti conceptualized, which we would call today homogeneous space. Uh, in other words, it was very basically continuous, universal, you could even say non-hierarchical, uh, politically democratic, any number of things there were the space of uh, conception. My argument today and the discussion that hopefully Mark and I will have uh, is not so much about uh, what is the role of intellection uh, in, in the world today because one could really start from there and we stop our discussion. But in fact, what I would argue is that the history of architecture what follows from uh, Alberti's De Re Edificatoria <clears throat> is an attempt to overcome uh, that idea of the homogeneous space. In other words, to uh, critique, change, and alter, transform that. So that uh, much of uh, the followers that come from Alberti, whether they be uh, Bramante, uh, Raphael, Michelangelo, Serlio, uh, etc., through to Palladio, <coughs> were in fact attempting to overcome the idea of uh, homogeneous space. Uh, and of course, that idea is, in Alberti's terms, the notion of consinitas, 
which has to do with that the parts relate to the whole, uh, that a, a small ho a house is a small city, a city is a large house, that is that there is a relationship in scale, a relationship in theory uh, to this uh, project. And um, what I would argue is that Alberti's conceptualization of that which is physical, real, and present is the first imminent metaphysical project and that everyone since then has been trying to overcome that metaphysical imminence. And of course, when we jump to the 20th century, uh, we find uh, that much of the interest of post-structuralist uh, thought thinkers, whether they be Derrida, Deleuze, Lacan, and others, was the fact that uh, post-structuralism was uh, uh, heavily into a critique of uh, the metaphysics of presence and that architecture represented the locus of that metaphysic and therefore uh, <coughs> would be a subject of, of enormous interest and criticism. And therefore, that project, in other words, while many other of the uh, projects of, of Alberti have been overcome, the uh, remaining condition is that uh, the metaphysics of presence still seems to be rooted in uh, uh, the place of architecture. Um, one of the main remaining uh, bastions of that. And um, that implicit uh, in the idea of consinitas or organism was that there is a relationship between parts to whole, but more importantly implied was those parts and those wholes were uh, nominated in uh, presence, that is, physical being. Now, today, um, there are two things about the digital revolution and about computation, uh, which uh, I think have to do with uh, uh, Alberti, a critique of Alberti. One is that computation presupposes a different kind of author, that is uh, uh, no longer a necessarily a single author. Uh, we have all kinds of uh, ideas about um, bottom-up authorship, about crowdsourcing, about BIM. In other words, we're working on a project right now where we have to assure the client that we will use uh, BIM as a system for uh, authorizing uh, what it is that we do. Uh, and um, so th there has been a, a, a real interest in uh, the question of this remaining author and what his or her uh, role is in, in the world. Um, um, the real question, the second question is, is that authorship and that product that is produced by the digital uh, located in presence uh, uh, and the possibility of, of, of presence? Uh, and I would argue that much of what uh, is being produced by the digital uh, has to do with what Mario Carpo calls in his book, uh, the digital turn, um, a digital Darwinism, that is a, a new kind of phenomenological uh, project which uh, rears uh, its uh, head in uh, the condition of uh, a digital phenomenology. And of course, um, uh, one of the uh, loci of that digital phenomenology could be argued to be uh, here at Columbia. Um, and I don't want to take any credit for 
that, uh, whether good or bad, but um, uh, Mark knows very well what uh, I, I mean by that, uh, whether he is supports the digital phenomenology is another question. Um, but um, the really important thing is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is do the people who use the dig digital, whether as a phenomenological instrument or not, understand that the potential of the digital is, uh, lies uh, elsewhere. And that is, number one, in the possibility of producing non-homogeneous space, number one, that is heterogeneous space uh, and what that might be. Number two, to produce that heterogeneous space in uh, the condition of the multiple as opposed to the singular, uh, which would take it from Alberti's uh, idea of uh, notation into uh, the multiple complexities of today. And number three, to produce not a consistent multiple, but the notion that <coughs> that multiple could be an inconsistent, that is, a multiple no longer uh, concerned with the relationship of parts to whole, etc. And of course, when we get to the idea of the inconsistent multiple, uh, we're into uh, questions of uh, how that relates or doesn't relate to issues of uh, collage, uh, the arbitrary, and other issues that are projected um, uh, in uh, the world of the digital. Um, the, um, I would like to just conclude uh, the, this introductory uh, uh, sort of setting up a scope of interest to say that <coughs> um, uh, part of what I'm talking about surfaces in Greg Lynn's new book, uh, The Archaeology of the Digital, uh, which uh, there is a whole chapter devoted to one of our projects. Uh, and that supposedly we are uh, uh, complicit in this, uh, the uh, introduction of the uh, digital uh, revolution. I would also argue that this is also the case with Mario Carpo's book, uh, uh, The Digital Turn, or uh, Algorithm, Alphabet from Al Alphabet to Algorithm, where we, my work figures uh, very uh, importantly in uh, Carpo's uh, description of the movement to the digital. Um, and I, I would like to close this brief introduction by saying I haven't a clue what it is that we are supposed to have done or will do that involves anything other than uh, the passion and will of an architect. And therefore, uh, yes, we use uh, digital tools, uh, but there's nothing in those digital tools that are decision-making for us. And therefore, um, <coughs> um, the author uh, still remains a question, number one. And also the, the question of uh, um, whether we are working with homogeneous or heterogeneous space is a second uh, very important issue. And uh, to be honest, uh, my, my feeling about all of the digital work that I see, especially after having interviewed Patrick Schumacher at some a great length in, in Log 28, and you all can read that uh, interview, um, where uh, I, I don't understand what it is about what they do 
that makes it any different than what an, ar an, an architect does. Uh, I, I've yet to find out what it is that, uh, uh, I, I understand the theory behind what he does, but when I see the results, I say, is that, does he produce multiple inconsistent heterogeneous space, which would be, to me, what would be the, the production coming out of the digital, and I don't necessarily see that. I see that most of the digital guys produce what I consider to be a homogeneous space with a, a, a skin that is a surface, uh, a heterogeneous surface. And of course, that to me is uh, where digital work is at present. But Mark Wigley, uh, the floor is yours. Um, well, with the Patrick Schumacher thing, I think it's important to choose who you interview with care. Choose who what? Who you interview. <laughs> um, well, Patrick is the only one. So, I mean, at some level, I mean, some uh, parts of what you're saying seem to mean we have to talk through quite a bit to figure it out, and other parts are kind of really clear. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the really clear part is that you're saying that you are not, have never been, and never will be a member of the digital party. Yes, that's correct. Um, or I don't know what being a member is. I might be by accident. Right, but you you quite comfortably use words like digital revolution and digital turn right. that imply that there is something that wasn't there before. I've been told that. Right, which you're not part of. Right. So there's a thing that wasn't there before which you're not part of. <laughs> this thing Mario Carpa will, will want to credit Alberti with. He will see yes. Alberti as the beginning of this turn, right. right? As the beginning of digital. You, unlike Mario, I think, right. read the sort of mainstream of architectural thinking as an attempt to resist the consequences of Alberti's okay. argument, right? right? So exactly. particularly, um, you're saying from immediately already with Bramante right. through to Palladio, yeah. Um, is, and then is the sort of beginning of the resistance movement. Right, right. Um, That's clear. Um, but it would be, but counterintuitive in the sense that most people would imagine that you would identify the digital as an extension of Alberti's sort of abstract concept of, hom of homogenous space. Space. Right? Um, so, for example, the, the space in which a digital work is, is developed and even the world in which that work is um, uh, constructed or printed would be this homogenous, infinitely calculable, um, but but democratic, non singular, but sort of singular, singular space. space. But you say no. You for you, um, the the uh, di digital is is part of the resistance movement against Alberti, and and Could, in, should be should be, and, and is in theory gen should in theory be generating. Uh, heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous stuff. Multiple so, inconsistence. So it kind of leaves one wondering how, what your relationship with Alberti is because um, it's like saying, um, it's a very kind of Groucho Marx thing, like uh, why would you be a member of a club that <laughs> would want you? Um, the digital club seems to want you and, you, and they put, the, they put yeah. you in their books and you say you don't really want to be a member of that club, but part of the reason you don't want to be a member of that club is that club is not doing what that club was supposed, supposed to, do, to be doing, which was generating non-homogenous yeah, right. stuff. But right. let's go back to one, one, let me add a footnote. Everybody in the Decon show at MoMA, your show of 88, never wanted to be part of that club, but we never said we ain't gonna be in it. Well, I think that's a group of people well, there's a group of Let's call that group architects yeah. that will be members of any club uh, <laughs> were you to invite them. I mean, I think the... <laughs> no, the that's not fair. Cedric, to my knowledge, Cedric Price is the only figure in architecture who has insisted on the importance of not joining clubs and of right. not necessarily doing the job, right? Right. Um, my, my personal memory of that moment was a series of architects who were um, all publicly disinterested in being in, in the show, right. and all privately negotiating for additional space in the show. Um, no, that's why I'm saying to you. And a number of people. No, no, that's why I'm saying it to you that yeah. right now, 
to say that I am uh, not wanting to be a member of that club is no different from all the people who went into the decon show, including myself, uh, for example, trying trying to disavow any allegiance to that. Right. No, but but I get it. But 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 that's what's interesting about clubs, right? That you're sort of saying I don't want to be a member. But one of the possible theories is I don't want to be a member because actually what you're doing doesn't interest me. Because what I would like to be happening is this non-homogenous thing. Right. Again, it's kind of counterintuitive because if you think of all of your early houses, they seem to take their force from a kind of internal disciplinary self-reflection right. in a kind of homogenous space. That is, and somewhat famously, whether the houses get built or not um, didn't matter. Whether they, they got were built, built or not, they were built. Didn't, they did, didn't matter in the notational systems. Right. So, and and you were for some time, Mister Notation. Right. Um, I'm 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 still saying that it's in the notation. The question is whether those spaces were homogeneous or heterogeneous. That's right. The, that's so, the question. So so. Y your love of Alberti, and it would seem to be love, because I never heard a single word from you that implied that anything about Alberti was any even vaguely wrong. Your love of Alberti, right? Can we say that? Yes. And even identification with him, right? Mm -hmm. Also, as a writer, producer mm -hmm. of books, we're doing a book right now on Alberti. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh. We can end the conversation. Uh, yeah. so, so this identification with Alberti, and therefore with the project, Alberti with the project, project. of um, uh, uh, you know the, the 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 brain of the architect, I would say, the invention of the architect as a brain, right? A brain who who a single brain, by the way, a brain that needed theory, right? But a single brain okay. because yeah. you're getting upset about the fact that. In the crowdsourcing, there might be, it's not clear yeah. who the brain is. And even when you say you're not into the digital and nothing in your office uh, needs it, you still say we, like there is still, so there's a, there is a, in your mind a group of bodies or brains yeah. that don't necessarily need the digital that they use. In other words, you, you don't allow for the possibility that the people that you work for are not even people without the computer. In other words, they are... Um, simultaneously, the people in your office are, are an extension of your brain and their job it is to, as it were, reproduce, help you produce the image of a single brain. That's right. Uh, you are also right. a one-man office, a one-brain office. Um, right? Uh, that's, that's also uh, although, increasingly unusual. Although, although my every name that I've taken has always been a plural name. The Institute for Architecture and Urban Studies, five architects, Eisenman Architects. There's never been a single identification, a, a, a single noun that identifies who I am. And yet, um, by the way, and, I'm, and I've you, been very careful you, about that. But as you know, the the sites of collaboration are the perfect locations for celebrating individual intelligence. Individual intelligence uh, OMA, you, OMA yeah. is the name of collaboration and one of the effects of that name is and begins as a collaboration one of the effects and, and, is, and is an office probably more collaborative actually in its mode of operation than, than anyone's willing to acknowledge and yet one of its most powerful effects and desired effects is the image of a single brain with uh, a single person. Likewise, well, Eisenman well, let, let, Let's go back. Yeah. Let's just go back because I want to make sure we, we, we hit this correctly. Right. When OMA started, um, there was Elia Zangelis uh, who was as important, in fact, he was the one who who brought uh, Om, uh, Rem to the AA, brought right. Leon Creer to the AA. He was the animator of that condition at the time. And I would argue that Elia was the animator of the Lavalette project 
to which was which is where the split was when he no longer could be the the animator or feel himself to be participating in that right, right and but, he left but that scenario is not a unique story uh, a fascinating story of the private history of OMA it's the story of architectural production where collaborative work acts fundamentally collaborative work acts as the incubator of the image of an individual brain. Yeah. Well, let, let, let me say, let's make sure that we include everything in this right. potpourri. So Eisenman Architects uh, I mean, uh, incubates one the new brain. Book, the new book out yeah. on, on, on Matthias Ungers, all right? right? Would have you believe that Matthias Ungers was a paper figure fronting for uh, Ren? If you read that book. It's a really a very interesting book. But it's a kind of kinky hypothesis. Well, it's nevertheless in a book that you yeah. should have. Mm. Uh, and uh, I find it fascinating that Omu uh, mm. was in fact a surrogate for Oma. Mm. Uh, and in fact, the Green Archipelago, which is supposedly one of the the, the, the real mo uh, seminal points in the development of the urbanism of, mm -hmm. of Ungers was in fact the brainchild of Wren in this book. Mm -hmm. uh, but but what did we're, we're could be, could be not. But, the, but the, 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 the getting back to the, to the kind of question, if, if Alberti mm -hmm. uh, reworks Vitruvius, mm -hmm to refine the idea of the architect as a brain. Yes. So that is to say, fundamentally, and a form of intelligence, a form of thinking. And re re redefine architecture as a need for a brain, and therefore a discipline, and therefore a right. theory. So architecture, both the same, right. both so of them. architecture is <laughs> defined as a discipline. I mean, right. that's in fact what uh, the dis disciplining is, is right. the is the thought that architecture is a form of thought, that architecture is brain craft. There Correct. is another set of, uh, uh, there are a set of prosthetic extensions, human and otherwise, right. that can um, uh, produce effects of that brain craft in the world, mm -hmm. but none of those examples, let's say a building, in any way make the thought any more or less a thought, or more or less important than the thought itself, such that, for example, the architect can say, I don't make buildings, I make drawings of buildings, mm -hmm. and the architecture is in the drawing. One it of was your... in my head and in my drawing, and it can be in the world. One of your important uh, examples being Cedric Price. Right. You could say right. Cedric is a good example of right. Albertian thought. Right, so that's, that's the... <coughs> In, in, in yeah. that way of thinking, uh, Alberti's very crisp formulation of what is actually not, in my mind, essentially different from Vitruvius's formulation, uh, but much crisper, much tighter, well, of, the I of the idea of the architect as a brain. No, Vitruvius never talks about space. No, but, but I haven't talked about space yet either. I'm just talking about brain. Okay. Right? Well, the space is the, is the locus of the need for the brain. Ah, but that only you would say that. Because, see, for you, that would be great if <laughs> the idea of the brain and the idea of space are inseparable. Yes. Because then... There you uh, go. That's exactly... That would be sort of like, um, instead of I think, therefore I am, I yes. think, therefore I build. Yeah. Because it's, as I have thought it, it's in the world, no, the I, world I, of space. No, I, I want to build, therefore I need to think. All right, but, but you see, in reverse, for you, that's the same. So with Alberti, there is no prophylactic um, uh, 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 sort of shield uh, and no compromise between the idea mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the idea is the thing, right? Um, so, so then you can get indexical well, links, yeah, links to right it, but, it, but it doesn't really matter whether they're there or not. Um, and that aspiration... No, but the, 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 no the, but the real key is, let's accept that as one potential situation. Right. That is, I need to think uh, because the discipline... 
but the locus of the needing to think is space. According to Alberti. According to Alberti. In other words, it's a theory. It's a theory. So Thank he's, you. His, so he's following yeah. Vitruvius, he says uh, the, right. archi the architect is a theorist. I mean, it's another theorist, way to say the same thing. The a theorist, but whose basic condition of the, of, of the, the theory is space. The, the, the Not real. necessarily. You, 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 can, you, you might be right, but we would have to read Alberti together. In Alberti, you have the argument that, um, following Vitruvius, that the architect, what makes the architect an architect is that the architect is a theorist. Right? Which there are Vitruvius a, doesn't say that. Yeah, well, he does. No, he, he says oh, the architect's a pragmatist. No, 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 no. Vitruvius, Vitruvius This lesson right. has to get longer. I mean, you know, we have, no, but just for a Go moment ahead. imagine that yeah. what I'm saying to you is true. Go ahead. That, that what, it, what's what you think. Yeah, that in Vitruvius you have a very clear argument that says, that, that identifies the, the, that what makes an architect an architect is theory. There is it's another the set of, yes, and there's another set of practical skills that the architect has to have, and if you have one without the other, you can't have one without the other. But what marks you, what makes you an architect is the theory, I would not, argue the practice, not that's, the practice. I would argue that the big difference between Vitruvius and Alberti is precisely that Alberti's critique of Vitruvius is one that the architect is not a theorist in, in, right. in Vitruvian terms. Number two, he's a Greek architect, not a Roman architect. I, I know, I, well, that's all good, that's all good. But, <laughs> but, but, I mean, experts on Vitruvius and Alberti are not going to listen to us on this anyway, no, right? So who cares? Right. Well, but, 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 uh, it, it's, you see, what, what, it shows the difference between us because, which, w b because for me, Alberti is, is a twisting or a reworking of Vitruvius. For you, you really want to have Alberti isolated, both from what comes before him and what comes after him. And that's, no, let me give you a little bit of a speech. That's a pretty amazing thing that you're doing. In other words, you have found somebody you identify with. I, yes, go ahead. To be more accurate, I, I should say, you are making somebody another one to identify with, and Alberti just an another one. right for you, yeah. which is a sort of dream father figure type, right? right? The, the you know, role model, right. isolated from what comes before him completely. No, I can't, I, I never say that, because I think You did he, say it. No, no, I think he you, is You did say it. Very I, much you said it even when you said what an architect, what, it's, what a student needs to know yeah. To be in order to be an architect is you need to know Alberti, Palladio, Le Corbusier. Yeah. Right, but to so, need so to we, we we are it's like life begins with Alberti. But but he's a proto humanist. No, 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 he's great. He's, I'm, I'm I'm a fan I mean, too, but 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 he's not there. No, no, but for you it's like he, he he exists in a in a which is much more to me much more interesting what other people say about Alberti. You have Alberti f floating in in, in, a, in a space that you need him to be a certain kind of person, doing a certain kind of thing, right. and he's performing for you. That, 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 what that means is not only an isolation of Alberti in historical time, but also you want Alberti himself to have isolated the architectural brain. Uh, and so, so it becomes this, and, and then yep. you, for, and for you, that, that isolated brain, the architect as brain, mm -hmm. that brain is inseparable from the concept of homogeneous space. In other words, it's a brain that lives in the medium, an mm -hmm. immaterial medium okay. of... He's of, the first one yeah. to need the brain to live in right. homogeneous right. space. But, but if we were continuing to read Alberti together, he could uh, say that and all of the rest of his arguments could be consistent with that, or he could say that and say some other things that don't quite fit. That's correct. In other words, it is possible to have the. It is possible that even in Alberti, one can find the concept of the of the brain of the architect as brain of architecture itself as a form of intelligence as thought, mm -hmm. um, but not that might not be fundamentally stitched to the concept of homogeneous space. That might be a second theory, for example, that he launches. Okay. Right. Okay. And anyway, of course, that theory is not his. Homogeneous space. Uh, was around, was, was in around. the atmosphere, right. and it's true that he tweaks it uh, and, and, and makes it 
uh, as it were, operational. But the fact that other people had that thought will be a risk for you because that's like Alberti learning from other disciplines. No, no, no. Let's assume that right? it's, a, it's, a, it's in the air. Alberti puts it together for the first time. What I'm suggesting is that those that follow, yeah. uh, because uh, the question of organism is in Bramante, mm. uh, the part to hold, consinitas, all of the things that make, or I didn't say that Al Alberti is proto-organism. Uh, Bramante establishes the, right. the idea that architecture is an organism, right? right? Not organic, but an organism. And that from that moment on, uh, there has been an attempt through architecture to uh, 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 transform that notion and, 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 and in a sense, uh, produce, whether it's mannerism, Baroque, Rococo, right. Right. neoclassical, whatever. Right. Uh, everything that follows is an attempt to transform that, the purity of that idea. Right. So, so again, Alberti becomes the sort of misunderstood or or they understood under oh, then, okay they becomes this resisted figure he resisted has, he's, figure. he's introduced something that they want that everybody else would like to resist right so so the complication of the story which is why it's a great story is i think is on the one hand alberti is probably the best figure with which to talk about the discipline of architecture and the and the you know because also Again, following Vitruvius, he lays out all the things that one would need right. in order to reinforce this in terms of education, drawing techniques, models, and uh, so on. Like, you know, if somebody mm -hmm. wanted to make an right. institute for architecture and urban studies, would, one would know all the bits and pieces right. that would be needed in order to incubate uh, thinking. So he, he's, he, we, we can associate him with the discipline, um, uh, and yet all the people in that discipline, the figures that represent that, that discipline, discipline, are not that happy with what, right? Yeah. So the, They don't want to be in that club. Right, so, so he's invented a club, that no the one members of which, in. even the exemplary members right. of which, are annoyed no. by a certain, okay. something written into the rules of right. the club, and they're working on that. But that's the nature of creativity. No, no, that no one, that, that for, from, for anybody, right. The breaking down the rules, uh, breaking down uh, the 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 father, right. uh, swerving in how right. Bloom's term is right because it's nature it's also it. a question of hospitality, right? Because right. Uh, Alberti didn't have to write the book, right? I mean, he could have had this idea, yeah, that the architect has ideas, yeah, and he could have thought that's a really good idea, yeah, and I'm pretty right about this, yeah, and not felt the need. You know, exactly, yeah. of course, in the moment of the mass production of printing, to use printing, and of course, in the very year that Vitruvius is being translated right. and printed, right. so in the sort of first age of mechanical reproduction, mm -hmm. Alberti wants us to hear this argument that architecture is all ideas. Mm -hmm. So basically, he, he mass dis distributes this idea successfully of the architect as having ideas in a discipline and so on, and yet the people invite, and it's a form of hospitality, right? He has right. invented a club. Right. Uh, by the way, the, that club has certain membership uh, privileges because if, if the if the um, architect is a, is a, uh, is an uh, is an intellect, that's a higher status in society than somebody who works in the in yeah, the but, crafts. But right? what's interesting is it's Bruno, a good club to be Bruno Leschi in. was probably more of an intellect than Alberti. Wrote probably more things than Alberti, and yet set forward none of the I, the disciplinarity right. that you associate with Alberti. In other words, we, don't forget the, the figure missing from this table is Brunelleschi. Right, but you, you left them off. Yeah, I left them off. You get, you, we have Alberti, yeah. Palladio, and Luca Brusi. That's it. Yeah. I mean, actually, it's good news for the, for the students because they are very busy. Yeah. And there's just three. That's it. Um, they, they got of course, those. of course, the, when they figure out that Luca Brizia wrote 55 books, maybe they <laughs> slow down a bit. But um, the, the thing is, he didn't write 55 books. Yeah, he did. Yeah, no. He did. said he wanted to write a book for every one of his built projects. He uh, built. He did. He did. 70 projects. He did. That's that's why he's in your list. You wouldn't be in that list. Likewise, Alberti. Likewise, Palladio. These are book people. They're book people for right? sure. So what? 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 
a young student of architect needs to know is he needs to read a set of architects that make books. <laughs> as well as buildings, right. by the way. Does oh, by the way. Ah, but, the bu but, but that's by the way. Oh, by the way. No, you, for you it's by the way. No, for you. <laughs> for you. Because you, you, didn't say, you didn't say the architects need to know Brunelleschi, da da da, Frank Gehry. No. Right? You, you want the book. In other words, to, so in order to be an architect, somebody who might build, you need, and again, no, following. That's really not, not, that's distorting what I actually said today. I said, go and see Le Corbusier's exhibition. None of the books are there in the exhibition. All is there are drawings, models, and passion, right? Uh, I said nothing about writing books. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Go ahead. Um, I said nothing about that. Let's see. Um, first, You're first. You're being tricky. You know that. Well, that's <laughs> news. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so, mean, if we had to take one off the list because the students were rushed, Palladio gets dropped, right? Palladio gets dropped. If we have to add one, who, get, who gets added? Not Mies. That would be a great list. So this is a, like a list of books not to read. And no, no, Mies doesn't have any books. Oh, but wouldn't it be a great syllabus for students? Yeah. Instead of a syllabus which says, here are all the things I want you to read, yeah. it would be like, during this, this semester, you have to promise me not to read, read X. all of these things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> who, who would be added to the list? Not Patrick Schumacher. Oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> oh, who's, who's coming in? Who's coming in? Not Mies. Jesus. Who, who, who would I add? I, I drop Palladio? No, no, you can keep him, but if, let's say it's four. Let's say the team goes up to four. Piranesi. Piranesi. So relative to, and Piranesi in this whole story goes where? Well, he goes in the 18th century. He's, he's to me, unlike what Mario thinks, I, I think he's the first modern architect. And he's um, nervous about the implications of Alberti's thinking? Mm. He, he's Mr. Heterogeneity? Not, not, doesn't even cross his mind, I would say. Even though the work itself is. almost looks like an image yeah. Of non homogeneous. Non homogeneous. It is. I mean, isn't, isn't yeah. he a candidate for Mr. Non Mr. homogeneous? He is, like he milk? Is, he is Mr. Non homogeneous. Non homogenized actor. Yeah, yeah, there he is. is that, isn't, couldn't he fit in there? Hey, there he is. So no. he would be, um, if Alberti is the sort of um, figure that you really want to be eye to eye with. Well, Alberti. Pernese is hanging around. Pr Alberti produces Mies. Right. Not a homogeneous space, right. per se. The idea of uh, the, fr I mean, the guy who in in modern times is producing heterogeneous space is Mr. Roundplan. Right. I mean, uh, Mr. Lowe's. Right. Uh, not Mies nor Corbu. The right. free plan and the open plan are all uh, homogeneous space. The 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 monkey in this is Lowe's with right. Roundplan. Right. Uh, by the way, I mean, I would argue there's a, a really interesting. So you want him in? You wrote books. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I, I, do I want him in to the, to the f that's number five? Five. You know, it sounds good. Five. Five. You, you, you know what? You need actually. You need twelve for a curriculum, but yeah, you need five. You, you could you could put Lowe's in there. You could, right? Yeah, you could. No, but I think that's. I mean, it, if, if so, if we kept going like this, one would start to build up a kind of list of the people. For, that are for you reference points, even if they're negative reference points, like don't read no, Mies. No, he's, like who? Like don't read Mies. You see, that's a non... You know, no, I think Mies is a... You, I, I, I don't believe that he belongs in that list. I mean, Los is, a, is, a, is, is really important in, uh, in many ways. Right. So, so um, even though I'm not convinced he theorized round plan, I mean, he, he did round plan. I'm not sure he theorized it, but... Yeah. Right, but if we go back to first principles, if for you the brain, a la Alberti, is inseparable from homogeneous space, 
it would make sense in reverse that Mr. Non-Homogenized wouldn't necessarily produce theory in the way, in other words, it wouldn't come the same way. way. It, wouldn't come it, it would same not way. be the same way. It would not be the five points. It would not be, it would. No, all the, all the theorizers be, are, are all homogenized. It would, might be even more about what you call passion. Yeah. In other words, there would be more mm -hmm. uh, 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 of this type. So, so okay, so going so far. So, well, of course, what, of course, I'm fascinated with your fascination with Alberti, but look at Bruzia. Where is he in this? Well, I had him in there. Yeah, I but mean, it, but try. is he is he um, well, upset with Alberti? No, 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 not at all. I mean, the five points uh, for an architecture that Le Corbusier yeah. sets for. I mean. He is the great modern theorizer. He theorized modernity, okay? Uh, but he didn't link it to homogenous space or, uh, he, he theorized, uh, you know, the, the free plan, he did in a way, sorry. Mm. The free plan is homogenous space. Right, I mean, because one, one, one narrative would, of course, identify Le Rosier and modernity in general with exactly homogenous uh, space, homogenous space as, as a space in which, for example, people can be exploited. Right. Because if, if everything is turned into a number, one can treat... But it's also non-hierarchical, democratic... Right, but a non-hierarchical space right, is, also, is available. Right. So, so of course, w what's implicit in Alberti is a total view, mm -hmm. right? The homogenous space goes forever. Is it, right, it's yeah. it's universal, and, and therefore, if if it's calculable, measurable, um, uh, uh, um, and you know no, it can be notated, it can be controlled, and small things can have big effects because they can be extrapolated. So even a drawing or a plan, mm -hmm. like a military plan, yeah, can imagine itself and successfully dominate. So in a, in, a, in, a, in a kind of, in, in, a, in a late phase of capital, to take the obvious example, homogenous space allows for the belief that one can manipulate the physical world with ideas, right? But, From a distance. Right. But, uh, but, but the distance really being not the distance of I can shoot you, but I'm in my head and well, you're in the we, world. What we need to then get into a fine tuning of if we're today, right. if we take Colin Rowe's idea of collage city, right? Which is a form of introduction into uh, the urban, into the architectural of heterogeneous space. Right. The collage, right? Uh, we then have to ask, what is the difference between the space of the digital and the space of collage, number one? And what is the difference between today, between what could be a possible heterogeneous space and the ineffective nature, let's say, of collage today. In other words, collage has used up its energy. And I think what we would need to do as students, in other words, in a second seminar after they get uh, Alberti, Palladio, uh, Piranesi, Corbu, and Los, is to then focus on where we are today uh, and the problem uh, of of collage versus heterogeneous space. Yeah, okay. I okay, mean, that but would be the next seminar. Yeah, it wouldn't be the best one. I mean, because... It would be one that Well, would because Colin Rowe was your real father, and Alberti is the one you wanted. And so, yeah, we'd have to go through collage, but of course, in, in, in a... In a yeah, but I was... You have to go yeah. through Colin. Yeah. yeah. Through... Yeah. Through, but... but, but but it, one, one, you know, and, and of course, collage is a very specific strategy, right? Um, um, intellectually and artistically, and so on. And one, one could say that it no longer has the force that it that, had. That's right. Precisely because collage is 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 universal. In other words, collage is the very it's, thing it's that everybody's encouraged to do. do. We are all so happy when a two-year-old can already mix and match. Thank and you. so collage... Um, no, uh, I, I was not arguing for collage. No, no, but I, I, think, it, I think I can offer something. <laughs> yeah. So if, if in, with collage, of course, <laughs> collage produces another totalizing 
consequence because it has if I can to produce it right if I can start out that way if there's if everything in the world can be brought to my phone right and I can mix and match it right then I now have a total view uh, I have the big the more total view my, my view is even more total right. than the classical modernist view right. even though all of the symptoms of that is collage right right it's mix and match it's Piranesi Right. So from this point of view, Piranesi, could, we can keep undoing this. Piranesi might be an even more ambitious megalomaniac intellectual, but then intellectually we, than Alberti. The third, but right? we have to get to but the... But I'm getting back to why you don't want to be in the digital club, you see, because you want, you want from them, um, you don't find them very interesting. And, and I have to say, as you know, I totally agree. Um, um, but it doesn't mean that interesting things won't happen. Should right? or couldn't happen. You're right, but... Uh, but uh, but, uh, but uh, I don't believe the digital boys understand the role that they are here to fulfill because I think they could, in some way, uh, produce a, a heterogeneous multiple uh, which is not what they're doing right now. Well... Uh, I mean, I think if anybody that feels that the digital is in any way new is an idiot. Um, no, no, I'm and not. There are a number of idiots in our in our field. Uh, the, the 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 even the short term history of the so called digital. Mm -hmm. We need about a hundred years to, you know, hundred years at least. We need to to get a lot of the the kind of basic bits and pieces for a short term history. But in a wider arc, when you look at the kind of ambitions of the digital and the, the, the sort of philosophical position, we go a long way back. So in other words, the, the, the whole, any expression like digital turn or digital mm -hmm. revolution already um, uh, is a kind of lobotomy of the, uh, uh, of the, of the, of the field. But isn't this... Let, let, Don't you think? Yeah, but let, let, me, let me just make sure we, we get to where we said we were going to get to. The real question is today mm. whether what is the project of intellection in architecture? We both agreed that that was the, the question, not whether it's the digital or collage or hero right. heterogeneous space, because we're talking about the project of intellection, where does it reside and for what reason today? And uh, I think that's a really fair question for these people. Is it going to help any of these people get a job? No. Is it going to help them get a client? No. Uh, is it going to help them uh, in any way, shape, or form, what we've been talking about, uh, in their real world today? Mm. And as I said to you, where it will help them is 50 years from now. Uh, right, there is this post, I told you, right? I saw this post on, on yeah. <laughs> the other day, it, says, it said, um, on a big billboard said, the first person to live longer than 150 years is yeah. already alive, alive today. today. So, um, <coughs> right. you know, it used to, if architects don't get anything until they're 40, right. still have 110 more years yeah, after that to kind of get it working. So, um, no, no, but, but we would... But imagine, imagine how you feel as a young architect that you're fighting a 145-year-old architect for a commission for your grandmother's house. I mean, that's what's going to happen because... Yeah, but I mean... The because because for, one of the consequences of the Alberti position, that architecture is a brain, um, is also an argument about time, right? Because because if, if, if architecture is... But they have a lot more time to... to they right, no, but, but if it's... If, it's, if, if architecture is, a bra is brain craft in a homogenous universal space... Right. Um, and the, what makes the thing architectural or not has nothing to do with whether it's um, uh, produced beyond yeah, the, the right, thought. Right. This also isolates the figure of the architect and architecture itself from time, because architecture sure. become, right? Yep. So in the, and, and since architects make the mistake of thinking that they really are a brain and their body is in some relationship to that, m most architects, for example, the idea, you will never retire, right? No. Why not? <laughs> but why not? Because if you retire, well, you can relax. I, I relax um, by working. No, 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 wrong. I don't, I don't relax at beaches. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Guilty as charged. No, I mean, no, no, but no, 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 no. But no, I, I, I was a little I bit can't foolish. Stand being on a beach. Right, but one, okay. one crazy. But one possibility is that the architect never retires because the architect has become a brain outside of time, and there is no limit to the the working of time, exactly. right so so that's why you why we have so many architects in wheelchairs um, um, <laughs> <laughs> no but good wheelchairs like good ones but b because b because of this because because he built into the built, it built into the alberti argument is is this kind of what if what if not only it's a brain but it's a brain as it were beyond time and, 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 and not by, I suppose my, my sort of general point would be there are many Albertis, many, many Albertis and many, many books. And even inside the 10 books are kind of counter arguments and counter positions. And, and, and maybe, this is in the beginning to address your issue, that the homogenous, the, the, the thought of homogenous space is very, very closely, even intimately accompanied by, uh, and is even a response to, a, an awareness of, of, of heterogen heterogeneity, right? right. So, so within Alberti, it's not like Alberti has like been to therapy and he comes out all homogenous and you're reading pure homogeneity. No. Even if that were possible, you That's as a reader would have to be pulled by him from your heterogeneous world into his homogenous world, which would require him to engage Right? right. So in the book is both the impossibility of excluding the heterogeneous mm -hmm. and, and his the, attempt. The, right? the, the obvious uh, presence uh, in the book right. of its right. So, corollary. Right. So in terms of your narrative, the, the Bramante through to Palladio are uh, dancing a little bit with this devil that's, in, that's not only in his book, but its existence is the reason for his book. In other words, okay. why would one, why sure. would one uh, when, when he um, codifies perspective, yeah. the, the need to do that, it's, it's, it's itself a form of resistance, right? It's, right. it's, an, it's a reaction, it's, it's, a, it's an argument, it's a very but polemical, it's not simply like, oh, now I see the world in perspective. <laughs> no, it's but a we, weapon. But, but clearly, Mark, if Alberti is the the proto-humanist par excellence, mm. the uh, the notion that the Enlightenment replaces humanism, that modernism replaces the Enlightenment, there's clearly uh, epistemic reasons for these that we that just going back to Alberti isn't right. going to do it for us, right? Right. Because humanism no longer suffices to deal with it, nor does the Enlightenment, nor does modernism, right. etc. What we're saying is, where are we in the ontological evolution of things uh, for these people? Where is the world of being? All right, I'll give you. A, I'll give you the answer. Okay. Because I mean, that's yeah. no, no. What I'll give you, I'll give, no, I'll, yeah, but I'll give you an attempt at the answer. You, your question is like. Um, you know, what is the role of the intellect, specifically the architect's intellect, in our world today? Like today. What, what does our discipline have to offer? I would tend to go back to, I would go back to Alberti and note the conditions under which he launches this image mm. of the architectural brain and deep closely associated with an image of a kind of calculable, infinite, immaterial space okay. within which architecture could, could or could not appear. Right. right? Uh, because because it, what's happening there is that the discipline is forming itself around the idea that the architect has some sort of special relationship with the idea of totality. Right? In other words, it's it's not you know you could it, it's one way of answering the simple question: Why was it an architect who did the perspective? Right. 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 Why? And even before, why Brunelleschi before with the experiment right. with the mirror and so on? Why was it? that architects in that moment, a moment of unbelievable scholarship, in fact, when we use words like intelligence, intellectual, and so on, words like academic, academies, this, these are all born in this moment. So this is a moment of the, the, the even, even Vasari's expression, renaissance of rebirth, is a brain rebirth. It's understood as intellectual. 
why within that field of extraordinary intelligence does a figure that we call an architect, Alberti, why it, is that the one that makes this decisive clarification? And I think it's because the, 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 the discipline is formed by making the claim that the architect's brain has a kind of relationship or is able to help society think about the, the totality. So your question, uh, what, what does the architect's brain have to offer today would be, what questions about totality are, are, are as it were, uh, available to the in, in, in intelligence of the, of the architect? And I, I really think there are, there are two very quick reactions. One, one is nothing. Right, we ain't. Right, it, we're out. Wow. You know, we're done now. Mm -hmm. um, the world is now weirder than any of the fantasies but let's that our discipline was designed yeah. for. The, 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 of course, the other reaction is the exact opposite. That it's not just a question of saying what are the big problems of the world. The smallest problems of the world seem to only be able to be addressed using the kind of holistic modality of the so-called architect. So, so in this moment of time, we're in a weird situation where the dis our disciplinary apparatus, that, that is to say, what it is that architects do very well, the way that architects think, and we train architects to think and talk and write. Drawing, building, etc. is just a, a window dressing to this uh, uh, think, skill. Think, talk, and write. Yeah. Think, talk. Right. Um, okay. You don't have to draw to be an architect. Yeah. You can't draw. Oh, you may not be an architect. Can you draw? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't re if it's, it doesn't really matter, right? I you can't draw on a computer. You. There Wait. wouldn't be an I see. There wouldn't be an Eisenman without drawings. Right. But it doesn't no, mean you necessarily have to draw. No. Because again, going back to the brain thing, even the drawing, like a building, is. Uh, Sorry, physical yeah. object. It, yeah. it wants to be as immaterial as possible. The drawing says, hey, I'm really not in the world. I'd much rather be back inside Peter's brain. But uh, I'm hanging out in the world for a while. I hang there like a shadow. Mm -hmm. A drawing is a shadow of something that really matters, which is the thinking. Yeah. So architects work in, 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 in shadows in this way. And, and the, but the real yeah. question, because I think we should turn on the lights and ask for yep. questions. Them. I have one last question for you. <coughs> is there are other people, filmmakers, artists, l uh, writers, philosophers, right. scientists, microbiologists, etc., who also conceptualize the present uh, in, in ways which may be more useful uh, than, than architects do. That, so the, the, I, I can't say that the, the, the thought processes that engenders architecture as opposed to something else is any more valuable uh, than, in fact, uh, the people that run hedge funds would say mathematics, the, the thing that must be studied today, uh, the most important uh, discipline is mathematics, which it hadn't been for right. hundreds of years. Uh, the, the, the guys that run Wall Street say, I'm, I'm looking for people right. in advanced mathematics. Okay, but so you're giving a third option. If I, my first two yeah. options were, we're out, we're, we're done. Out. Um, Second, we're in. But we're in the university, so nobody yeah. will notice for another 100 right. years. Um, the, the second answer is the exact opposite. This is our time. Right. Hey, and the third option, get, get dressed, we're on. Yeah. Right? The third option is, well, there are lots of people have things to offer and we stand alongside them right. and so on. But it is interesting to note how many of those different fields are obsessed with architecture. No, I would argue just the reverse. How many of those different fields that architects are obsessed with? Uh, I mean, and which will never be of any help at all to being an architect, as I've found out. I mean, well, I've you've been- You've done okay. What? You've done okay. N not because I was obsessed with. No, but you've always been obsessed with writers, film yeah. and you've done fine. Yeah. Let's, I, I, let's, I mean. Let's turn on. But just to one last one last thing. Yeah. The. I'm worried about me. I'm worried about them. But I don't worry about them. Well, you don't worry about me. Never. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think if 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 the so-called next generation um, has to hear from us uh, what they should do. 
I mean, then they're a really boring group. No. So in other words, all we can, all we can do is demonstrate through our clumsiness uh, I have to, I have to what believe, you should not do. I have to believe that even though I believe intellection is out, right? Uh, I have to believe coming up here for what everyone wants to call what we've just done uh, is of some value to someone out there or I wouldn't do it. I have to believe that what you and I achieve by this annual uh, whatever yeah, tag team match uh, is of some value to someone that someone is going... If I didn't believe that, I probably would go sit in a wheelchair on the beach. Uh, me too. <laughs> me too. But I think, I don't think you're as, but I think <clears throat> teaching, that's what you're describing, uh, yeah. is not one to one. It's not like, get no. ready to download, here it comes. The effect that you're describing is precisely off. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, off to one side, unexpected, unusual. It happens to us, it happens to everybody. It, it is uh, the real beauty of listening to someone is that something happens that they didn't think they were saying and you didn't think you were hearing and that's, that's right. why it's great to talk to people. So in a certain way, it's great to talk to people if you don't listen to them, right? right. Because if you really listen to them, all, no, you're no. Gonna, all you're going to do. So if you really no, listen to your it's teachers, the side that glance, doesn't work. That's something. Right. Right. So it's it's Mark Wigley's next intellectual project. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so so just to we go to the questions, but but one way then of summing up this whole conversation is, you you, you see that Al Alberti was such clarity, and, and and of course we didn't say it yet, but it's a great writer. He's really a great mm -hmm. writer. I mean, he writes novels, what we would call today novels as well, about monsters. There is really right. important to read about. And monsters lurk in right. the ten books. Right. The, the other of architecture, the other of the discipline, are what he calls uh, 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 monsters. And so you could say the question, what is the role of the intellectual architect today? It's, we could only answer that question if we could identify what the monsters are. The, right? the title of the book that we are doing for MIT Press is called Alberti Analogous. Uh, That's pretty good. Which has to do with what is the analogy today to the discourse implanted by him. Right, but, but... I mean, without that, we're not doing anything. But according to what we just said, yeah. you may have, and you do have, um, a deeply psychologically twisted and, and impressively fetishistic identification with Alberti, which is a good choice. Among others. Right. No. Among others. Yeah, there are hardly any others. Yeah. Um, and the book, the book is about Alberti, right? Right. So but for you, know, but yeah. for you to listen to your father, to listen to Alberti, yeah. you will also the book is go off to one side. See, no, like you will see. no, but you will also to be a student right. of Alberti, you will go off to one side. And my understanding of your complaint about the digital, so-called digital generation. I translate to be as they didn't have the ability to just slide off right. into an area uh, outside of classification, outside of what we understood. So you're bored by them. Um, me too. Can we, can we have the lights on? This, um, this is where we simulate democracy. Yeah, we're going to simulate democracy for those that are, yeah, we should put the lights on so that we can see if there are questions, because we always do and, and this, uh, a fetish uh, with questions from the audience. Uh, so who's first? We can't, we can't turn on the lights? Hey, that's <laughs> good. There are people still here. You, you're, you're the boss. Who's up? Yes. Any, yeah. Um, I think that it's very interesting that um, the dimension of time was brought up in this discussion, and, um, particularly in the context of the development of digital technologies. And I'm wondering um, more about how the dimension of time would relate. I think that one particular um, issue with architecture, as has been discussed in Alberti's um, conceptual separation, is that the design is formed and then it gets built. But in a lot of the current models, um, 
of development of digital media and software development, it's evolving to a more iterative model where um, it's continuously being redesigned as it's also being constantly produced live all the time by web servers rather than being um, constructed once as a one-off um, creation. So I guess I'm wondering where does that leave architecture in terms of um, not only space but also time? You first. You go ahead. Well, I, I no, I think it's. I think it's a great question. I, I, I can give a half a reaction, but not a really good answer, and, um, because you framed it in terms of time. In terms of authorship, I, I think you're exactly right, and it seems to me not very, it's pretty clear that, that um, uh, in a more sort of open source, even crowdsourced environment, the, the, this idea of the architect as a single brain um, that we've ad we're associating with Alberti is absolutely uh, detonated. Um, that's the first, that's clear, right? It, authorship is under a very different guise. But then again, if we go back and reread re Alberti and so on, um, it is of course just a fantasy to isolate Alberti from a history of, a history of texts and writing and phenomenon and even the book itself that he's producing is itself grafted out of and a reworking of, a, of another book. So even the fantasy of the, so it's not like there was this brilliant thing called the author and now it's gone. It was never, never, it was always a desire. So the desire for the author has uh, 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 evolved. But you don't see, but in, wouldn't you say that, that authorship per se is now at an all time high? In other words, the, the sort of impossibility of the individual author um, is exactly matched by a massive publicity industry devoted to individual architects, individual brains, individual thoughts. I mean, you should be publishing your sketchbooks, your photographs, anything to do with you will contribute to this, let's say, myth. So, again, I would say it's not like a digital turn or a digital revolution that, that suddenly that model of authorship no longer works. It never worked the way it did. So the question is how to look into these, um, uh, uh, the current conditions and locate the multiple concepts of authorship that are fully operational there. The very idea that there would be one concept takes us back. But it's not a really good answer because what you asked was uh, what does that mean in terms of time? And I think, I think it's a brilliant question. I don't, I, I would like to think about it. I, I would think that any notion of heterogeneous or heterogeneity in space would also talk about heterogeneity in time. That is, there was no single moment of apperception or understanding where suddenly one, uh, the subject is aware or that uh, the, the object presents itself in a single time. I, th I think architecture, uh, has, uh, I, I once wrote an essay uh, called The Being Only Once of Architecture. Uh, and that says that architecture is about presence uh, and I'm not convinced that presence is the being only once of, of, of architecture. And therefore, m much of uh, what one thinks and does has to do with non-presence and um, uh, how one presents that in a, in a discipline which uh, is fundamentally the metaphysical project of presence uh, is very complex. So I, I don't have an answer for it, uh, but I certainly know that Siegfried Gideon's title, Space, Time, and Architecture, doesn't have an answer for it either. Uh, and to ask questions about time, I think, are, are really useful. Uh, how one deals with those answers is uh, probably very subjective and very personal. Other? Yeah, it's one right up at the back. Uh, I had a question about um, Alberti's institution of the kind of disciplinary author and it seems that there's a specific way he forms the author in that uh, the author, the disciplinary author, is not 
an author that speaks in his own name, but someone who speaks in the name of some, uh, we could call it transcendental metaphysic, which if we uh, read Vitkover, it would be something like, you know, the Greek harmony, the Greek harmonic system or something. And so uh, Alberti is an author to the extent that he uh, has gained access to some other, some transcendental knowledge and can enact that in the world. Um, so uh, if, we're, if we're out of the age of the transcendental metaphysic and into the imminent metaphysic, is that form of authorship also now, uh, that form of authorship and then also the, the forms of disciplinary constitution that resulted from that, is that uh, under threat, under collapse? Uh? Well, it seems uh, from what I read that uh, uh, if, if you get the sense from competitions and clients as we deal with them today, uh, there is the sense of uh, the client, the author as, as multiple, uh, as the crowd uh, sourcing, you know, as uh, um, bottom up thinking. So I would have thought that the author that uh, I've been talking about, and perhaps Mark as well, is under attack today, uh, that kind of an author. Uh, and uh, expertise is under attack. Um, people that go to Ivy League schools are under attack. Um, so, uh, sure, um, I, I think, um, I don't know if I'm involved in a rear guard action or not, but uh, I certainly uh, defend uh, my my right to be an author, whether it's an old-fashioned author or not, I don't know. But uh, I do know in every contract that we sign, I insist on having aesthetic control. Uh, that And otherwise, I, I couldn't go to sleep at night if I thought that uh, my client, my associates, my engineers, uh, in, environmental specialists had the last say in aesthetics, I, I would quit. Uh, and as long as I can continue to be the aesthetic arbiter, uh, no matter how uh, unfair or how unrational or how unwhatever, uh, as long as I have that, I, I believe I'm behaving as an as what I to why I'm here. Uh, and I've spent many years getting that expertise that I, I don't have to justify any longer. I'm choosing that one as opposed to that one. I do it very quickly. I do it quicker than anybody else in my office or in, in my students. And um, I'm good at making those choices because I'm the only one that can make them. But you, you've never been very far away from students, right? No. no. I'm close to students. Right, always. Yeah. You wouldn't exist without them. You're correct. So, I mean, it's just my way of saying that, that I mean, again, I think the question was super well framed. The, the, the consequence of Alberti's position is, is a, a fantasy of the individual brain of, of an architect but the but uh, the 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 reason for all the printings of the book and and the reason for the discipline itself is that this brain is actually a networked brain. So in other words, the fantasy of an individual brain depends on and is born out of a collective brain, the discipline, architecture, the eternal conversation, on and on and on and on. So so when you say uh, such and such is under threat, I, I don't. Firstly, th threats are usually what produces something. They don't, it's, don't, they don't, threat doesn't lead to the collapse of something. Threat right. is normally the, the very uh, li lifeblood mm. of it. So actually it would be great if the discipline was under threat. You I mean, don't think sad, it is? I don't, sadly, we still have schools of architecture. I mean, you know, it's, it, it's really, we talk about the crisis. There have been, the crisis of the discipline has been the name of conferences for the last, hundred, more or less since the discipline began. Right, which is uh, you know the, prof the profession, the crisis of the profession. Um, but but if if you if you agree that the 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 the, 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 the architectural intelligence is a networked intelligence, something like an Eisenman is a kind of node um, uh, in in a global network 
through which pass, through this body, pass through the students, up and back and around, and he's filtering, collecting, and so on. So, so in the same way that when you look into a brain, it's a massively complex organism which is capable of producing the effect of an individual idea and so on. You can have the effect of individual architects, but they simply wouldn't exist without each other and without this extended uh, 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 an environment. So actually the, the architectural brain is a very powerful instrument that could be used in a very interesting way in today's world. And I think the point is, it's not being used in a very interesting way. Um, and, and Peter's question to me is more like, were we to take advantage of this capacity of the discipline that has been built up over time, you know, what's the capacity of that? And he doesn't say that to himself, he says it to you in a room with a video camera going to a live feed to be archived, to be thought about. In other words, he's asking the networked brain, guys, what are we up to now? Mm -hmm. Of course, that idea is not even coming out of his head. It's coming from you. Because if you didn't like what he was saying, he wouldn't say it. Or you wouldn't be here. So you are producing this um, um, menage, this, this collage of stuff in order for you to think about what you might be your future, which is what I meant by you don't, not listening to us to tell us what your future is. You're looking at us as a weird effect of yourself I'm thinking this is not great. We, we, we could um, I, I would argue evolve. Seventy percent of the students, not just here or any place, my university, other universities, don't really care whether I think that Palladio, uh, Alberti, and Le Corbusier are necessary knowledge that they must have. I don't think they care. Wrong. Well, wrong. I'm not, no, I'm wrong, not wrong, wrong. That's why, that's why you have a nice group of, of people here. That's why I think, for all that we've said, schools of architecture remain absolutely, uh, if you're going to address this question that you've asked about what, in what way could the architectural discipline right. contribute to society, that's, the schools of architecture are the locus of, 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 sure. of this. It, the, it, schools are, of architecture are even an image of this, highly condensed, uh, multiple minds from many different backgrounds and directions operating in very close quarters to think together about something while at the same time the school is producing individual portfolios and self-publicity campaigns and so, so the little, little independent figures of independent brains are being massively incubated within a collective environment. So in other words, it's, it's not just like, oh, in the school, let's think about what it is that the profession could do or what architects could do. It's the school itself that does the work. Again, going back to Alberti, it's not whether, whether you run out of this place and make amazing buildings and so on. It's the work done here, which is the work of the field, which mm -hmm. is the field. And, so, and, and of course, the, 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 the boundaries of schools are not solid, they're very perforated. This is, you, again, look at architecture as a field. We, more than any other field, invite professionals. In other words, we, we break the line between school and profession, between the brain and the world. So I, I think the answer to your question is like right in schools like this. I, I, don't, I don't think there's any place uh, more um, seemingly irrelevant, seemingly redundant, seemingly crazy, do you know what salaries you're going to get? But, 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 uh, I, I and nowhere more precious. Okay. Right? If we were to take the standardized tests that uh, students in New York school systems take, yeah. and they get 16% in English, or 16% in, in English and 20% in math, if I, they took out a piece of paper, everybody in this room, and I said, write down the three buildings, important buildings, of Alberti, I would probably get 16 percent. Yeah, if you're lucky. If I'm lucky. So, tell me about. I said 70 or 80 percent are oh. totally uninterested in Alberti. If I'm only going to get 16 percent or less of the three buildings that are important for Alberti, then we've just proved my point. No, no, no. Because you said nobody cares whether I think they should read Alberti. That's right. Right? And you said it because maybe they will read him. 
Yeah, I'm saying. In other words, in other words right. you may not be optimistic, but as a but teacher, you're saying. That's why I'm here. Hey, uh, and by the way, I mean, that's also why I like talking with you, because who else could I talk to who could say, okay, these are the books that I think need to be read? Right. And you could say, oh, well, that's just a Neanderthal. That's the old idea that there are the masterworks and so on, yeah. the core. Um, but it's not bad to listen to somebody who can actually say, by the way, these are the things. So he's saying you should see this show, but of course the thing he says you should experience in that show is the one thing that is the weirdest thing of all to you, and the one thing that your work has been like Drawing. so Drawing. strongly, yeah. no, passion. 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 You yeah. are like Mr. Abstract. That's right. Um, no I could be in the face, I could be That's in the right. face of the biggest murder scene in the history right. of the planet and geometry, yeah. I will that's I right. will do it, right? How about that? Mm -hmm. So, you want us all to go and see the show by Luca Ruzio? For passion. For passion? Yeah. The thing that weirds you Which out. Which I don't have. Yeah. Uh, maybe we should just finish. Uh, uh, give, no, can somebody else give a question? Or give an answer, like, yeah. Uh, my question is about uh, space. It, it didn't seem to be defined at all uh, during your discussion, and it seems to me it's hard to uh, compare homogenous space in Alberti's time and homogenous space, whatever that might be, uh, whatever that might mean in our time. True. Okay. But 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 okay. you do have a but you but you can give some you can give a what you think Spassium meant for Alberti. Yeah, right? but I mean I would argue that I'm saying is that we're, we're talking about the evolution of the discipline, that is, how the discipline evolves. And I, I'm suggesting that one of the first theoretical uh, uh, contingencies, let's say, was the, the need to define space uh, and the need to define space as homogeneous, etc. And so this is the first time in the 15th century that, that space is defined conceptually as being a necessary, even though space has been in architecture forever, it hadn't been defined. And I'm suggesting that is one of the theoretical propositions to me that make Alberti's book and what he's thinking about very important. Uh, and the definition uh, of the author, the definition of, uh, of Roman space, not just space, homogenous space, but Roman space. Uh, um, and, and to me, those kinds of definitions define the boundaries, the first boundaries of the discipline of architecture. Whether they have any relevance today or not is ir 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 irrelevant in the sense is that they began to define what the, th the theoretical discipline was about. Uh, and for me, uh, if you don't know that, you can't work to define what that theoretical, what those boundaries are today if you don't know where the first ones were. The reason why I pick Le Corbusier, Palladio, let's say, and, and, and uh, Alberti is all of them in their own way redefined Palladio's four books, redefined Corbu's uh, Versen Architecture and Five Points uh, of an Architecture, redefined what Alberti was talking about. No one else in the history of architecture, I, you know, you can uh, question that were as clear in their redefinition of what was the discipline as Palladio's four books and Le Corbusier's uh, five points. Uh, no one else was as clear, and that's why I've said you cannot think architecture today or be an architect thinking, which I assume to be the same thing, if you don't understand Alberti, Palladio, and Le Corbusier. So we're going to go, but that's in a way the answer to your question about time because the reworking of each of these theorists is the working of the collective brain through, through time. Speaking of time, you have been super uh, kind 
to us, uh, hospitality is a very weird thing. You are the hosts, uh, you put up with us, but really yeah. uh, Reinhold and the Buell Center uh, and Enrique, we're very grateful for the invitation. Buell Center is, is a crucial intellectual resource in the school, so, so for those of you who are new at the school, you should get to know what Reinhold is doing, and um, Enrique's a miracle, as always, um, and a lethal tennis player. Um, uh, for those of you I coming, I wish you had won, Reinhold. <laughs> that's my only wish. I was rooting for you, and that's a very strange thing for me to. Yeah, of of all of those monkeys, huh? I was rooting for you. So on that mysterious note, um, <laughs> uh, it's been fun. See, uh, for those of you who who have been here for the first semester and so on, I think it's going to be great this year. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, just the sort of vibration that, and the beautiful questions, uh, you're very kind to us. We'll try to be kind to you. See Thank you. you. you know, long, 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 long. Yes, there was some energy coming from another place. I actually think that, well, I think the two, no. were, if those were the two options. No, those weren't. The third option 